Joining us now to talk about the impact and some of the implications of the Chinese pipeline is Rob Subhani. He is president and founder of Caspian Energy Consulting. Rob, thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much for having me. What does this tell you about the role of natural gas within China, both right now and the years to come? The news today was certainly a game changer in terms of the geopolitics of the region. China is making it very clear that they will look around the world to secure their natural resources. And if they have to go up against Russia, they will do that. And they have proven with this deal today with Turkmenistan. Uh, what about the news we've been following over the last two weeks or so, Rob? That is China announcing its carbon intensity targets in terms of cutting its GHG emissions to a different role than a specific cap. But that has to put more of a premium on these low carbon energy sources, something like natural gas within that country. Uh, absolutely. And uh, to the extent that the Chinese themselves are looking at the big picture, uh, issues of uh, environment, issues of pollution become major for Chinese themselves. And so I, I think what the Chinese government is looking at is they do not want to uh, be behind the Chinese people, hence the transversion to natural gas and away from more pollutants. What does this say for China's exports now? Does this mean the EU is going to buy uh, gas to some extent from China rather than from Russia? Do they see that as more of a secure source potentially? Well, I think as far as the EU is concerned, what we're going to see probably is a acceleration of the Nabucco pipeline from Central Asia, Azerbaijan to Europe, and uh, more LNG from countries like Qatar, and basically diversifying away from Russia. Uh, I think that'll be the overall European strategy. So what do you see Russia doing to react to this, Rob? Certainly it won't sit still and uh, let its so-called stranglehold slip away, right? Um, obviously, Russia is the world's number one uh, country in terms of natural gas reserves. Uh, and ironically, the number two country is the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, recently, Russia and Iran have been cozying up on the energy sector field on natural gas specifically, and so I believe the Russians are not going to sit idly by and allow uh, the world to diversify away from Russian natural gas. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for the U.S., Rob? Where does the United States turn from here? Is, I've, I've heard talk of a trans-Caspian gas pipeline potentially. Yes, uh, the United States probably would be more active diplomatically on ensuring that a Trans-Caspian pipeline gets done, uh, Europe is diversified away from Russia. But in terms of our own natural resources, I believe that uh, what we're looking at, especially your previous segments, uh, we have enough natural gas plays in our own country mm -hmm. uh, to secure our supplies. But what we may see is some spot cargoes of LNG from countries like Trinidad, Algeria, Qatar, but nothing significant that would in any way hinder or damage our energy security as far as natural gas is concerned. Rob, bottom line here, what's the bigger takeaway? What China gets from this or what Russia loses from this pipeline? Uh, I think that uh, to the extent that Russia gains, it's a loss. Uh, I'm sorry, to the extent that China gains, mm -hmm. Russia loses. Uh, China is the big winner today. Russia is not a loser yet because Russia sits on the world's number one reserves of natural gas, but certainly not a good day for Moscow. Rob Savani is president and founder of Caspian Energy Consulting. Rob, it's always good to have you with us. Thank you very much. We appreciate your insights on that.